everybody, it's Richard and I'm back for another video. Uh, happy Memorial Day. I hope everybody's having a good holiday. And, uh, and um, I'm back today to review something that everybody's been talking about. This has been going crazy ever since it aired. I just watched it the other day. I actually binge watched it in like two days. Um, and when I, when I heard the title, the title didn't make any sense to me, but, uh, um, but, uh, after watching the show, it, it made, it made sense to me after I got the reference, uh, in the, in the show with the title. Um, but this has been, this has been all everybody's been talking about. There's been, uh, there's, it's all over the internet. People from the show have been interviewed, and uh, Pierce Morgan did an interview with the person who is supposed to be allegedly, I'd say allegedly, who's allegedly supposed to be the stalker in the show. Um, and I'll get and I'll talk about the Pierce Morgan interview in the in this video too. And that is the show Baby Reindeer. On Netflix, street, uh, streaming on Netflix now. Now, I don't have Netflix. I have an app uh, that I am able to watch stuff on. Um, it it has a, a ton of stuff uh, on there, and it gets Netflix shows and everything. So I was able to watch this through that app. Like I said, I binge watched it in like two days. It is a seven episode uh, miniseries. So there's seven episodes. And pretty much the gist of this is um, this guy named Richard Gadd. And I'll let me say this, this. Yeah, this is a true, supposed to be, anyway, from Netflix perspective. And from the guy who started the guy who started it. Star, star in it, Richard Gadd, is who this is based on, and this is supposed to be a true story, not based on a true story, uh, not, this is supposed to be 100% factual events of uh, what happened, and the guy who wrote it and stars in it is, is um, who this apparently happened to, allegedly happened to, his name is Richard Gadd, and he is a comedian. Uh, he is a he is, um, is a comedian. So, basically, basically what happens is this guy Richard Gadd. Um, I've never seen any of his comedy, uh, his comedy, and other than on the show, he um, does some of the comedy on um, the show because. Um, He's going through what happened, and he's and um, part of this takes place at one of his comedy sh or at a couple of his comedy shows. So basically, it, what happens is this guy Richard Gadd is a uh, struggling comedian. He has two jobs. He is a struggling comedian in in uh, London, in the UK. And he also works at a pub, a bar in the UK. Um, and this girl, this uh, lady named Martha, um, com comes in one day, and uh, she's all depressed. Um, she's all depressed, and he's trying to make her feel good. And I, he's trying to be friendly with her, make her feel good, and uh, try to make her friendly and uh, feel good. And um. He's not really trying to, I mean, he's just trying to be friendly. And he, uh, says, well, what do you want to drink? And she said, I don't have any money. I can't. Th that's another theme with this. She never has any money. And she always, he always gives her a drink for free. Um, um, she doesn't have any money. So, out of, out of niceness and kindness, he offers her a cup of tea on the house. He says it's on the house. Don't worry about it. Um, I'll pay for it. It's on the house. So this that's how this starts. As he meets this, this lady named Martha, who he gives a free cup of tea on the house just to be nice. 
and then this vein becomes obsessed with him and stalks him. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so he becomes obsessed with him and stalks him, and she claims to be a lawyer, and she um, is not a lawyer. She's just a crazy, uh, crazy uh, person who stalks people, apparently. Now, like I said, the person who, um, who, who is supposed to be the stalker did an interview on Pierce Morgan, Pierce Morgan, and I'll get to that. Uh, but, um, as far as this, I figured this was going to be really crazy and, like, insane and crazy, and I thought it was very mild. I watch stuff, I like dramas, I like, um, I, I kind of I kind of like dark stuff. I'm not a dark person. Don't take me the wrong way. I like dark stuff. I like dramas, and I thought this. I watched Canadian Stub Muffin's review of it. And from what I thought of his interview, he was making it sound like this was completely crazy and insane, and um, I didn't think it was that. I mean, I watched you. If you've never watched you, it is another Netflix show. And, the, and that show is absolutely insane. It's another show about a stalker, and it's crazy. You have to be able to handle effed up shit if you want to watch you. It, it, it gets pretty bad. But I thought this was um very mild. Like I said, there's not really, there. I mean, there's violent parts, but it's very mild. There's nothing really that crazy about it. I think the stuff on that. I mean, the stuff on the internet is actually more crazy than the stuff on the show. Um, I thought the interview was actually more interesting than the show. So, yeah, uh, there is some sexual stuff that happens to Richard Gadd in the show, which is which I think is more upsetting than the actual show. He does get raped by somebody who was pretending to be his friend. Um, and who was going to help him in comedy and with his uh, comedy and maybe help him uh, with writing scripts, maybe get him a, help him get better jobs, and he and that person takes advantage of him and rapes him repeatedly a bunch of times, and um, he I don't know why he just goes back to him and eventually he does stop. But he, he goes back to him a bunch of times and keeps getting raped. They keep get they get high. He drunk he he gets high with the guy and when he passes out, that's when he gets raped. Uh, so so yeah that that happens. And I think at the at the end I don't get this at all. I would never be able to do this. He makes up with the guy who raped him. Uh, violently raped him. I would never be able to do that. Uh, but yeah, so there. Yeah, see that. Yeah, so there's all this stuff happening. There's a there's a there's flashbacks too, because him, him getting raped happened before uh, this girl started stalking him. He was with another girl who he broke up with. Um, before he met Martha, and he actually lived um, at his ex-girlfriend's mother's house until it gets way too crazy for the ex-girlfriend and the mother, and he has to go live somewhere else. Yeah, so basically, and there is supposed to be like 41,000 emails. Uh, I, I can't remember all the numbers, but the one that sticks out is there's supposed to be 41,000 emails from this lady uh, to him and then like hundreds of hundreds of phone calls text messages uh, 106 letters I remember uh, she was supposed to have written 106 letters to him she denies all of that but uh, so I don't know whether it's true or not I think I'm believing Gad in this I'm kind of believing Gad because she vehemently denies everything in the interview with Piers Morgan. But then she says, 
he kind of like backtracks and like he backtracks on it. Kind of says, I don't know if, if it's po- if maybe it's po- either either it's possible or it's not. Either you stopped this guy or you didn't. So I'm kind of believing Gad at this point. Um, but yeah, so so he kind of befriends he kind of befriends her. And then she just starts emailing, I mean, texting him and emailing him. She just starts texting him and emailing him. And then she puts pictures of him on her social media. And I think that is when he starts to realize that this, uh, he may probably need to cut this off. There might be something wrong here. Uh, and the title of the show, Baby Ringing Here, comes from, uh, he said that he reminds him of a toy that she had when she was a little girl of a baby ringing deer. He reminds her of that toy, and she makes a reference to that on her social media um, with, uh, with a picture that she took of him in the war. And that's pretty much at the point where he starts to realize Okay, there might be something wrong here. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should stop this, nip this in the bud, and and uh, delete this girl, and and have that be the end of it. But he seems like he's kind of a nice guy, and maybe because of his past with being raped, he can tell that she has issues, and maybe she's not all mentally there. So she, so he wants to. I know he, he's kind of struggling going back and forth with should I delete her, should I uh, like just be friendly, what should I do? But uh, eventually, he eventually he looks this uh, lady up, this lady Martha, and he looks her up as a he looks her up. I think he looks her up as a lawyer, but then all this stuff came, comes up about her stalking other people and uh and just a bunch of articles about her and uh said she spent time in jail there's all kinds of stuff on the internet about her so then he starts to realize oh i i got myself in a bad situation here uh but um it's kind of by the time he does it it's kind of late uh and like I said, he's going back and forth with, uh, should I, uh, delete her, but should I delete her, but then, um, she kind of has mental issues, so maybe I should just, uh, be friendly. But then it, but then it gets to the point where she's, like, stalking him. And she's actually sitting outside of his house where he lives. Um with his ex-girlfriend's mother, he's actually sitting out there on a bench stop like 24 hours a day. Um, like, like living at this bench stop, literally living there and not going anywhere and yelling at him when he goes on the street and, and trying to talk to him, yelling at him, yelling at him as he's going down the street, going to the bar. Um, and at first he kind of ignores her, but then she, she kind of like gets in this state where she's like, doesn't really say anything, where she's like kind of like, I don't know what the term is. She's like kind of doesn't say anything. She's just like sitting there cold and she's uh, not really doing anything or saying anything. She's emotionless and kind of like, like, her affect is just not there. She's kind of emotionless. So he kind of gets concerned about her at that point. And uh, he goes over to her and says to her, says to her are, you, are you okay? Uh, are you okay? And then she doesn't say, she really doesn't say anything. So he takes her back to her apartment and uh, gives her a cup of tea. And then he tells her this has he tells her this has to stop. And you have to stop this and you have to stop hanging out 
at the bus stop and stuff, so I'm coming into the bar, and she was, yeah, another thing is she was coming into the bar every single day, uh, coming into the bar every single day, and he kept giving her free drinks on the house, she didn't drink, I think, she drank like Diet Coke, kept giving her free drinks on the house, uh, being nice to her, but then it got to the point where she was just like, but in her defense, but in her defense, he did, he saw all the stuff about her on the internet, and he, and she's sending him all these emails, and he doesn't, um, and he doesn't put a stop to it, but eventually he tries to put a stop to it, um, and she does, she does, um, not go to the bus stop for a while, she, um, goes, it, she, um, there's a little bit of time where he doesn't hear from her, but then she goes back to the bar, and, um, she goes back to the bar, and, uh, he, they get into a fight at one point at the bar, they get into a fight a bunch of times through this series, at one point, he's with another, uh, woman who is a transgender woman, and she beats her up. They're at a bar together, hanging out, and, uh, like I said, they're involved. And she beats her up. And, um, she has to be pulled back. He pulls her back. And, um, and I think, and she beats on him, and it turns into a whole big thing. Um, it turns into a whole big thing. And she does, uh, beat his girl, his, his girlfriend up. So, her, so... Um, the girl, the girl he's with does break up with her, break up with him because of that. Um, eventually she just, uh, can't take it anymore and does break up with him over it. But, like I said, it gets worse and worse and worse and she's emailing every single day. Thousands and thousands of emails, hundreds and hundreds of text messages and phone calls. And... Uh, he does mess around with her. So he is kind of leading her on. He does mess around with her. But that still doesn't... He does mess around with her at one point. But that still doesn't warrant all the stuff he's doing to him. So... Yeah, it's basically what happens is she's just, um... She's just stalking him all the way through this. And, uh, she just... It gets worse and worse and worse, and then finally, at the end, it does go to trial, and she pleads guilty, and she ends up in jail. That's how it ends. Uh, but, at the end, but like I said, he's going through all this, and then, he's going through all this, and then at the end, like, he kind of still wants her. He's like, at the end of this, he's kind of like, he doesn't, he kind of seems like he still wants her. But she's already in jail. That's the theme through all of this. It's like he's going back and forth with, like, he still attra seems attracted to her, but she, he knows she's crazy. That's the theme through all of this. And at the end, he's, like, looking at pictures of her or, or on his phone when she's, after she's sentenced to jail. And how, the, and how this actually ends is you think there's going to be more to this than there is. Because it ends with uh, him, him at the bar, he work, him at a bar, and uh, him at a bar, and him ordering a drink, and he, he says he left his wallet at home, and it ends with the bartender saying, look, he can tell that uh, Richard's dad is kind of upset, and he says, oh, it's on the house, don't worry about it. So that... Kind of leads you to believe there's going to be more than a story, and they might make a second part to it. I don't know where it would go, but uh, that's how it ends. So it kind of believes me to believe they're going to make a second part to it. Uh, now another thing is she heckles him at his um, comedy shows. At one point, when they first meet, she comes to one of his comedy shows, and he's struggling on stage. And he, the crowd's kind of like annoyed with him and booing him. But then she starts like talking to him and they, they banter back and forth. And then he becomes funnier and the, the crowd likes him. He, the crowd likes him after that. 
he becomes funnier and he gets an applause and they uh they start to like him. Then the next time she goes to one of his shows, she um kind of go she kind of goes after him and starts he well heckling is is not really the correct term for this. She keeps kind of badgering him and uh coming after him. And he it gets to the point where they're actually he's on stage and she's in the audience and she's fighting with him. Um and that has to be thrown out of the comedy club. So yeah that that happens and then at then at one point then at then then where this actually turns he he eventually um breaks down on stage and talks about being raped and uh and then he talks about Martha. So that's where this kind of takes a turn after he breaks down on stage. Um Yeah, but basically it just ends with him with her going to jail. Um so that's pretty much the gist of it. I thought it was pretty good, but like I said, I thought it was um, very mild. I thought it was going to be a lot darker and a lot crazier. So, I'm trying not to leave anything out either. I may forget some stuff, but like I said, this is on Netflix, if you have Netflix and you want to watch it. So yeah, everybody's pretty much talking about this, but then uh, she... Um, well, the person who was alleged, and her name is Fiona Hart, and she is going. She is suing Netflix now, I believe, and Richard Gad. Uh, she is suing Richard Gad and Netflix now, I believe. She went on Piers Morgan and denied everything. She denies everything, and I think Piers Morgan kind of believes her, so he kind of uh, goes easy on her. I thought. Um, but I kind of found, I kind of thought, I don't know, the way she was going back and forth about it, saying, eh, I didn't do it, but eh, maybe it's possible he had voicemails or messages. And she kept going back and forth and saying, no, I didn't do it, but then she says, oh, maybe there's a possibility of that. So which one is it? Either you didn't do it or you did. Either you stalked this, woman, this guy and harassed this guy or you didn't. So I'm kind of, I don't know what to believe about her. Um, and she kept saying, I don't, I didn't, she said she only met him like five or six times and really wasn't that involved with him. And she said she may have emailed him a few times, but there's no way in hell is there 41,000 emails and all these voice messages and all this stuff. She admitted that she did send him a letter one time. But uh, she said one time, and there was supposedly supposed to be 106 letters from her. So she did own up to the one, but she said no more than one. Um, so I'm kind of stuck with her. I don't know. She, and I'm kind of leading to believe that she did it the way she kept saying, no, I didn't do it. It's possible. And like I said, I thought Piers Morgan went really easy on her. Because I think he believed her, and I thought, thought he went really easy on her. I thought it should have been a tougher interview, but uh, I thought he kind of went easy on her. And I'm not a big fan of Piers Morgan at all, but I did want to see this. Um, so yeah, apparently this is this is uh, going to keep going. I think she is suing Richard Gad and Netflix now, saying that the show is all bogus. None of it happened. It's, none of it's real. And, uh, like I said, she said she met him like five or six times. It did send him one letter, and maybe, uh, she, she kept saying a handful of emails. Well, I kept wondering, what, what is it, what is it, handful? And that's what Peter Morgan did ask her. What's a handful, like two or three, ten, what's a handful of emails? And she, I think she said no more than ten. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what to make of this lady, Fiona Hardeby, who is apparently supposed to be the real-life, uh, Martha. And, and she kept saying, this was, this is going to prove I'm not the real Martha, that it's somebody else, but then, 
like I said, you kept going back on it and saying, well, may, there may, there could be a possibility. And I'm thinking, which one is it? Either you are or you aren't. Are you Martha or aren't you? Either, um, either you are Martha and you're a crazy stalker or you're not. And she did own up to, like I said, the one email, I mean the one letter, and she said, um, that she did email them a few times and there were a couple of exchanges and um, and also he said that there was this joke in the show about hanging her curtains and the hanging her curtains was a sexual innuendo for sex and he said that um, he did make that joke to her and and uh, she I guess that they, that's how they started messing around. And she said he did make that joke, but he rejected her, but she rejected him and said she had a boyfriend she's not interested. So, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, so this is, I find the stuff on YouTube way more interesting than the actual show. Like I said, it was good, but I thought it could have, I thought it was going to be way darker way darker and uh, ser more serious than it was. I thought this stuff on YouTube was way more entertaining. Um, oh, and she did take credit for the baby reindeer thing. She did say, tell him that he reminded him, she, he reminded her of a toy reindeer that she had when she was a little kid that was a baby reindeer. She did take credit for that, the name of the series, and and uh, sending him a letter one time and, and texting him and, and messaging and tweeting a few tweets. But other than that, she says this is all bogus and it's made up and she's a victim here. So I don't know what to th I kind of am leading toward believing Richard Gad here. I don't know what to think about this. Um, so let me know what you think. Did you watch it? Are you interested in it? Do you believe uh, Fiona Hardy or do you believe Richard Gad? Let me know what you think. Uh, so that's my review of the 2024 Netflix miniseries Baby Reindeer. Let me know what you think. and uh, Let me know if you're interested. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and give me a thumbs up. And if you're new over here, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So you always be notified when I do a video or go live and do live streams. Until next time, remember peace and love. Peace and love is the only way.